Hello all, and today we will discuss how to create an elastic block storage volume and attach it to a running Linux EC2 instance. Before we jump into the demo, let us understand what are the different types of elastic block storage volumes available uh, and what are the differences between them. So as you see, we have uh, two core types of uh, elastic block storage volumes, SSD and HDD. Now SSD stands for solid state drive and HDD stands for hard disk drives. And amongst these two drives, there are two subtypes for each. So for SSD, we have two other subtypes, as you see right here. We have uh, provision IOPS and we have uh, general purpose SSD. And for hard disk drive, there are two subtypes, throughput optimized and cold. Let us understand uh, the different scenarios under which we would use these uh, elastic uh, block storage volumes. And this is the most important thing as far as uh, you know, your certification is concerned, is the applicability and the use cases of these uh, different e EBS volume types. Okay, so as you see over here, uh, the, the, big, the biggest use case for provision IOPS would be anything which is IO intensive, like a NoSQL or relational database, which has a frequent uh, IO operations. For anything that is, you know, um, generic, regular, your dev test environments, your web, probably your web server, something which does not require a high late, um, some, uh, you know, IOPS or a, a lot of interaction uh, uh, with the with the disk is something that you can use where you can use a general purpose SSD. On the other hand, let's say uh, if you were to uh, provision something for you know let's say your data warehouse or uh, MapReduce or Kafka or, or basically big data kind of processing or even ETL or log processing or anything of that sort, you would actually use uh, throughput optimize. That is the best because it gives a good, uh, good uh, throughput both in and out. Uh, on the other hand, let's say if you had an older uh, uh, enter enterprise data warehouse, you know, which was not used very frequently and it required a few scans per day, in that case, uh, it is probably just acting as a storage for you, but it's not completely dead. You would probably have a few scans per day. The right type of EBS volume would be called HDD. The other thing that I would definitely want to point out to you is the volume size. So as you see, the general, general purpose volume is the only volume which allows you to create anything which is around one GB. Provision also has a minimum size of four. And when it comes to HDD, the minimum size is 500 uh, uh, GB. Okay, but the maximum size across all the volume uh, types is 16 terabytes, as you see. All of them are 16. Okay, the other thing that you definitely want to uh, make a note of is the price. As you see, price of general purpose SDD is probably the lowest. After that is uh, provision IOPS, and then is cold HDD, and then finally is throughput optimized. Another thing that you want to keep a, a note of over here is that for provision IOPS, you have an additional charge of 0 0.065 cents uh, per provision IOPS per month. And again, keep in mind, guys, that uh, SSD, both provisioned IOPS and general purpose IOPS, is optimized for any input output uh, operations, whereas any HDD uh, EBS volume type is optimized for throughput. There's one additional uh, EBS type, which is magnetic, which is not enlisted in this table over here. Um, that particular type is not optimized either for IOPS or nor for uh, uh, throughput, okay? That is basically, you can 
kind of consider it to be more uh, you know more more for storage purposes something that does not require any iops operation or does not require any throughput it's something that's more for storage purposes and again that is one of the types which is uh, which which can, which allows you to provision for 1 gb size for volume for volume sizes just like how general purpose ssd allows you to provision uh, the volume for a minimum of 1 gb okay uh, i would certainly encourage you to uh, review this particular aws link this is where i have taken this uh, table from and this link certainly has far more details that uh, you can review okay so let's now uh, go and jump into our demo so i'm going to go back and select my mouse pointer and and switch to my aws account so in order to speed up operations what i have done is i have actually launched an ec2 instance as you see it's right here this is my ec2 instance which is running uh, it has a public ip this instance has been launched in my default vpc it is a t2 micro instance as you see it's using this uh, ami which is an essentially a linux ami and with this particular key pair and it is using this particular security group let's go and check the security group for inbound i have open ports 80 and 22 and outbound everything is all default now if you want to learn um, how to launch and linux ec2 instance i've created a separate video for that please refer to my video i will also post a link in the description of this video so that uh, you have your the link handy in case you want to go ahead and visit that video first before proceeding ahead okay so the next thing that we will do is go ahead and ssh into this uh, linux ec2 instance using its public ip now again to speed up the process what i have done is i have um, already started my putty session right here and i'm basically sshing into my uh, amazon linux ami again if you want to learn how to ssh into uh, your linux ec2 instance i have created a separate video for that i'll again post a link in its description please refer to that video okay so uh, as you see i had uh, executed this command earlier but i'm going to go ahead and clear this so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to go inside and understand and check out how many volumes are currently attached and mounted with this particular EC2 instance. So by default, when this instance was launched, I had attached one EC, uh, EBS volume to this, okay? Just, this is the volume that gets created by default um, when we create the EC2 instance, and that volume should be mounted as well. So if you want to know which are the different volumes that are attached and or mounted, uh, with this uh, EC2 instance, the command for that is lsblk. So hit enter, and uh, this will show you which are the different uh, volumes that are attached and are mounted with this EC2 instance. So as you see, XVDA is attached with this EC2 instance and is also mounted. The mount point is right at the root. Okay. So the next thing that we will do is we will go ahead and create a new EBS volume and then attach that EBS volume with our EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and create an EBS volume. So let's go and create, click on volumes. Okay, and then say create volume. As you see the different types that we had seen over here before, um, before we jumped into the demo we had seen them in the table all those types are enlisted over here okay as you see this is general purpose and the minimum size is one and the maximum size is 16 terabytes okay so let's say if i change the size to one the moment i change the size of this volume you will see that the iops 
that is this will change. See, it changed from 300 to 100. If I change this to 1000, it will change again. The same thing is true for provision IOPS. Okay, I can probably even go ahead and set the IOPS for this. As you see, throughput is not applicable. Okay, let's say if I go ahead and select throughput optimized, so it will say IOPS is not applicable. And again, if I go ahead and change the size, let's say I change the size to 500, then the IOPS will change. See the IOPS, uh, sorry, the throughput will change. The throughput changed from 40 to 20. Let's say if I go ahead and increase the size to 5,000, the throughput should change again. So as you see, it changed to 196. The same thing would be true for cold HDD. As you see, the throughput changed again. If I reduce the size, let's say to 500, the throughput should change again. As you see, it's, it dropped drastically. It dropped to like 640, which was really low. Okay, so for this demo, um, let's go ahead and select general purpose SDD. Okay, so I'm gonna create a very small volume and I would encourage you to also create a small volume just to you know be uh, cost conscious and keep cost under control. I don't want you to pay unnecessarily. This is just for learning purpose. Okay, we are going to create it in the same availability zone as our EC2 instance. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and click on create volume. Okay, so this volume should be created and provisioned shortly. So we'll give this a name, say my EBS volume for Linux EC2. Okay, so this is my volume. As you see, it's already available. Okay, so our volume has been provisioned. So the next thing that we will do is go ahead and attach this volume to our EC2 instance, okay? So you need to go ahead and click on actions, then click on uh, attach volume. So click on attach volume over here and go ahead and, and click on instance and you should be able to see your running EC2 instance right here. Okay, and this is going to be loaded at slash dev slash SDF. Now you could use possibly uh, SDP. There are actually a list of Linux devices that are available uh, online, please check it out. Now one of the things that I will certainly draw your attention to is this. So even though we are mentioning over here slash dev slash SDF, it may be mounted at a different device. As I mentioned over here that for newer Linux kernels, it may rename our device to slash dev slash XDVF through XD, uh, sorry, XVDP. Okay, so let's see, we will figure it out. So let's go ahead and first attach this volume. So let's click on attach. Okay, now this volume is being attached to our uh, EC2 instance. So as you see, the status changed to in use. Okay, so let's wait for a few minutes. Okay, I think it's uh, attached to our EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and check that. So we go back to our party and we will execute the same command again, LSBLK. Okay, so Note the differences between the two outputs, right? So this is your first output. As you see, there's only one EBS uh, volume, which is for about eight um, GB. Now, since we created a new EBS volume of one GB and attached it, as you see, it is attached to our uh, EC2 instance. And instead of uh, slash dev slash SDF, it is uh, slash dev slash XVDF. Okay, so as you see now, this um, volume is attached to our EC2 instance, but it is not mounted yet. So I'll create a separate video uh, on how to mount this uh, attached volume to this Linux EC2 instance, and I'll post, post it uh, shortly. Okay guys, that's pretty much it from me today. So I'll see you later in another video. Please post your comments and do let me know if you would like me to create a video uh, on any specific topic 
and I'll certainly have it posted. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye.